In this video, as the title indicates, we are going to be calculating radical halogenation product ratios using a table of relative reactivities. And I know that title is quite the mouthful, but it does illustrate what we're going to be doing in this video. So here's the table of relative reactivities of each of the carbon-hydrogen bond types with each of the halogen radicals and I've excluded iodine because it doesn't really react it doesn't react in uh, doesn't undergo radical halogenation with any of the alkane CH bonds but you'll notice though we have ones for for all of the primary bonds so all of these reactivities of the other bonds have been normalized to those of the primary CH bonds Okay, so the first reaction we'll be looking at is the reaction of ethane with iodine. Even with the input of heat, this reaction does not occur. So remember, iodine does not undergo radical halogenation. The, the process is too endothermic. So for all intents and purposes, it does not occur. The next one we'll be looking at is fluorination of propane. And remember, there are two distinct types of hydrogens here that can be substituted. You have these primary hydrogens on carbons 1 and 3, and the secondary hydrogens on carbon 2. So this is going to be one of your products. And this is going to be your other product. But how do we calculate the relative product ratios? Well, we have to account for both the number of hydrogens of each type that can be abstracted and result in substitution and the relative reactivities of those hydrogens. So here we have primary hydrogens. And there, there are three. There, there are going to be three at this carbon and three at this carbon that are all equivalent. And they have a relative reactivity of one. So it's going to be relative reactivity times number equals 1 times 6, and that's 6. Now, for this product, there are two hydrogens whose abstraction ultimately lead to this product. And these are both secondary hydrogens. So with fluorine, their relative reactivity is 1.2. So again, relative reactivity times number of hydrogens, 1.2 times 2 is 2.4. So then we add these two numbers up to get a total, and that will be, I'll just write, scroll over here, the total. 8.4, that's just 6 plus 2.4. And to get the relative reactivity, we, we divide. I'm just going to put an arrow 6 divided by 8.4. And this number here is approximately 70. It amounts to about 71%. So we divide and then we multiply this by 100% to get this percentage here. And we do the same thing here to find the ratio of this product formed. So we take 2.4, which is the product of relative reactivity times the number of hydrogens that'll that whose substitution will result in or could result in this product. We take that product again and, and this time I'm using product mean the answer to a multiplication problem and divide by 8.4 once again. And if you multiply that number by a hundred percent, 
you're going to get about 29%. Now let's look at this reaction here. This is going to be a bromination reaction of this monosubstituted cyclopentane here. And remember that bromination, radical bromination, is very, very selective. So if we were really only concerned with the major product form, we would, uh, we could say that this is the major product. You get substitution at this tertiary carbon. Remember, there's a hydrogen here as well. But here we're considered with we're we're uh, concerned with the distribution of products, so we have to account for other products as well. I'm just going to write them here. So there are four possible substitution products here. You could get substitution at this at this tertiary carbon that'll give you this product. You could get substitution at this primary carbon that will give you this product you could get substitution at either of these equivalent secondary carbons that will give you this product remember if I drawn the bromine here at this carbon instead of here it would still be equivalent to this And we are ignoring, we're ignoring mirror image isom isomerism for now. And this is a radical process, so it'll result in a racemic mixture anyway, if you've already covered stereochemistry in your courses. If not, don't worry about what I just said. If you have, or you, you could also have substitution at either of these two carbon atoms, which are equivalent, and that'll result in this product here. Now let's let's look at the uh, relative reactivities of of each of these uh, CH bonds that result in the substitution products, as, as well as uh, the number of hydrogens that could be substituted substituted to give any particular product. So to give you this product, you only have one hydrogen that could be substituted. but it is a tertiary it's a tertiary hydrogen participating in a tertiary CH bond so with bromine that has a relative reactivity of 1700 so if you want to multiply the relative reactivity times the number of hydrogens this would be 1700 times 1 and that's 1700 should write in a little bigger next time for this one this is a primary hydrogen if we look in bromination remember all these are normalized to primary hydrogen so that that's one a relative reactivity of one and we have three possible primary hydrogens that could be substituted here so relative reactivity times number is three or sorry it is one times three and that's three now let's look at each of these secondary products here so there are actually four there are two hydrogens on each of these carbon atoms just going to go ahead and draw them here. So any of any of these hydrogen, any of these four hydrogens, two on this carbon, two on this carbon, could be replaced with a bromine. I'm, and I'm using the term replaced loosely because you know the mechanism 
it's such that it's not like replacement actually occurs. You know, you have a formation of an alkyl radical, and then, and then the radical, the halogen radical, bromine in this case, attacks the alkyl radical to form this product. But I'm so I'm using I'm using the re term replace very loosely here. Okay, so there are four hydrogens whose abstraction can lead to this product. They're all secondary hydrogens. So with bromine, oh, this I think this is a mistake here. This should be should not be five. This should be eighty. Should be eighty. So bromine, bromine has a relative reactivity of eighty with secondary hydrogens. So the relative reactivity times a number, it's going to be 80 times 4. It's going to give you 320. And to get this product, any of these four hydrogens could also be abstracted. They're secondary hydrogens, so again, the relative reactivity is 80. So again, you have 80 times 4 is 320. So what's our total here? Our total, I'm just going to write it over to the side. Our total is going to be 1700 plus 3 plus 320 plus 320 we can kind of ignore the 3 so that that seems to be about 1700 plus 640 3 is not going to really contribute hugely to this total and I think this is 2340 so we can say our total is 2340 We divide each of these by 2340. So here we have 1700 divided by 2340. You multiply this by 100%, you get about 73%. This here would be 3 divided by 2340. And for all intents and purposes, we can we can assume this yield is is about zero. So I'm going to say uh, this amounts to zero percent. Now, 320 divided by 2340, 320 divided by 2340, it's about 14 percent. When you round to the nearest percentages, round to the nearest percentage, I should say. And that's the same thing here 320 divided by 2340, it's about 14%. If you add it up, you get 14 plus 14 is 28, plus 73 is actually 101. And, and you really don't have 101%. This is just because we rounded. This is going to be 13 and change, but the change was bigger than 0.5, so so we rounded to 14. So it looks like our we have a total of 101%, but we actually don't. And yeah, so even though even though bromination heavily favors favors uh, tertiary hydrogen abstraction. Over, over either primary or secondary. Remember, looking at the table, the ratio of tertiary to primary is 1,700 to 1. Secondary to primary is 1,700 to 80. So for bromination, say for BR, second or tertiary, ratio of tertiary to secondary, it's about 1700 to 80. And that's that's about a factor of 213. 
So even though, even though abstraction of a tertiary hydrogen is favored over secondary hydrogen abstraction by a factor of 213, the fact remains here that you have eight secondary hydrogens, right? But only one tertiary hydrogen. And that's why secondary product still accounts for 28% of approximately 28% of your yield. And it's a mixture of these two products. So you do have to, this, this drives on the fact that when you consider product distribution or relative product ratios, you do have to take into account the number of hydrogens as well as the relative number of hydrogens of each type as well as the relative reactivities of each of those types of hydrogens.